I am in a travel group on Facebook and about two weeks ago, a woman posted a question in this group asking after sitting through a timeshare presentation, whether or not investment in a timeshare would be a good thing. And as I read through, there were over 900 comments to this question. And the majority of the comments were negative. They're all a scam. They're a ripoff. You never, ever want to have a timeshare. You can never get out of them. And if you die, your kids are going to be stuck with it. There were tons of responses to this person's question. And as I read through it, it's, I'm thinking most of these comments are inaccurate and individuals just don't understand the value that timeshares can provide. And this video is not to say you should have a timeshare or you should be a timeshare owner. That's an individual choice. But I wanna do this video to answer some of the different questions about timeshares and more specifically, how is it that I am able to live in timeshares full time as a nomad for less money than I was paying living in my house in Phoenix? My name is Debbie Morton, and about 18 months ago, my husband passed away unexpectedly. And at the time of his passing, he had booked for us three vacations with our timeshare. One was to St. Martin, the next one was to Williamsburg, Virginia, and Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and then the following month to go to Mexico. I decided to go ahead and go on each one of those trips. But while I was in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, sitting on top of a hill, looking out at the Smoky Mountains, it was two months after he had passed. I'm still suffering effects of widow's fog. I'm in kind of a surreal world. It was just an opportunity for me to have a moment to truly relax. And I got to thinking, if I did it right, I could, I could spend a lot of time here. I absolutely loved Gatlinburg. It's like, I could spend a lot of time here. And then in that moment, I also realized if I did it right, I could actually live out of timeshares full time, probably for about a year. And so I started putting the pencil to the paper to see if this really could be a reality. And I made a decision that I could sell absolutely everything I own and I could live out of timeshares full time. And so eight months ago, I turned in the keys to my four bedroom home in Phoenix. And I am right now living on the road as a nomad. And so I feel like I'm qualified to share how I'm able to do it. I have a lot of people asking me, how is it that you're able to do this? In my case, however, it's not the best way to do it. So you're going to want to stay to the end of the video because I'm not only going to share with you how I'm doing it, but I'm also going to share the best way if this is something that you want to do and how timeshare vacations can actually be extremely cost effective. I am not in timeshare sales. I'm not even going to refer you to someone who is. I'm simply giving my own experience because I am loving this opportunity to travel around and live in beautiful resorts for actually, in most cases, less than people are paying for Airbnbs. I'm not a fan of Airbnbs. I don't like all the rules that typically come when you are staying at an Airbnb home and all the things that you have to do. And, and also, it's a private residence. How, like, in my opinion, it's like, how do you know there aren't hidden cameras here? I'd much rather stay in a four or a five star resort than stay in a in a Airbnb and inside of the resorts that I stay in, I have a full kitchen and I have washer and dryer and I have cable and, and everything that comes with, with living comfortably at home. I am here on YouTube sharing not only how I live in timeshares, but also different places that I travel to. I'll sometimes do a video about that. And I do have a home-based business that I am able to work from anywhere in the world. And so I share that also on this channel. If you'd like to follow in any of my adventures and learn what I'm doing, how I do it, please hit that subscribe button where <laughs> hit the subscribe button down underneath here. I'll point to the subscribe button here too. <laughs> hit that subscribe. It helps me out. It helps YouTube know what kind of content you're interested in and you'll be notified whenever I do post a new video. I want to start by sharing what we did wrong. 
we bought our timeshare directly from the timeshare company and i'll tell you which one that is here in a second but we ended up we were vacationing at a resort that happened to have a timeshare component to it and so we were invited and given i don't know 200 dollars or something like that to sit through a presentation and if you've ever sat through a timeshare presentation 99.9% .9 of the time they're unpleasant you go in and and I'll do another video on this in the future but uh, they they learn all about you and then they try to show you exactly why timeshares are such a great investment and with that they're often deceiving in what they present it's they're sharing that once you buy into this timeshare, then you get to vacation in it forever. But what they typically don't share with you is that you still have to pay maintenance fees on whatever you've purchased every single year. And there's no control over the price of those maintenance fees. They go up each year and you have no control over that. And so most of the time, I'm going to say almost all of the time, if you're buying your timeshare directly from the company, it's not Going to be that great of a deal because you may invest anywhere from 10 to hundreds of thousands of dollars directly with the company in order to have this timeshare but here's what you can do differently people who own timeshares and quite often they don't really know how to work them to the best advantage and they want out maybe they're maybe they're older and their health doesn't allow them to be able to travel anymore their kids are grown they're no longer vacationing in the way that they used to vacation. There are a lot of people who do want out of timeshares, but on the resale market, there's very low value to them. So quite often you can just take over someone else's timeshares. It can be transferred to you and it's just the cost of the transfer. It might be 500 bucks and maybe you're paying, you know, pennies on the dollar in order to take over what someone else wants out of because they're tired of the month or the annual maintenance fees on that property. So we made the mistake, we bought directly from the timeshare company and we invested a lot of money to do that. And then over the years, of course, the maintenance fees keep going up. So that is not the right way to do it. I'm making it work for me because I'm living out of them full time and it is saving me money, but that's not the way you would probably want to acquire a timeshare. And by the way, what I'm sharing with you also, I don't, timeshare industry is always changing. Make sure if you're going to take over someone's timeshare or if you're in a timeshare, anything that I'm sharing with you, just check. Do your own research to make sure that it is accurate for whatever it is that you want to do. So the best way to acquire a timeshare is to take one over from someone. There's two different types of timeshares. One is strictly a points-based timeshare system. We happen to own Diamond Resorts, and Diamond Resorts was recently purchased by Hilton, and it is strictly points-based, and points-based have no value in the open market. And here's why this type of a timeshare being specifically with, with Diamond Resorts, because I have a points-based, I don't have a deeded property like one week at a certain place each year, I don't have a deeded property to be able to deposit it into what we call an exchange. There are different timeshare exchanges, Interval International, RCI, I think there's one called F SFX or SXF or something like that. There are these exchanges where a timeshare owner, if you have a deeded property, you can put your timeshare into that exchange and once you do that, you're given credit so that you can book a timeshare anywhere, you know, anyone else's timeshare who has also deposited in that exchange. It's a way so that you don't have to go to the same place every year. You can actually go different places because you have this deeded property and you put it into the exchange. That is the best type of timeshare ownership is to have a deeded property with the ability to convert it to points. That's the ideal type of timeshare to have. So again, I did it wrong. I had a points based system only. And so here's what's happening is I know that inside of the exchanges, you can also get last minute deals. The exchanges will 
offer and it, you don't use your points, you don't use your week, you don't use any part of your timeshare. It's just that once you have ownership of a timeshare and you get into this exchange, now you can book different last minute deals inside this exchange and it's for cash, but you can stay in four star hotels, five star hotels, all inclusive resort. You can stay in amazing places all around the world if you have the flexibility in your schedule to be able to travel on these last minute deals. I'm very grateful that I've been able to connect with somebody who wants out of their deeded property. And so I'm in the process right now of taking that over, which will expand my ability to use the timeshares. If you're wondering where do I go to find these different deals on timeshares, or if you have a timeshare and you're wondering how do I, how do I get out of this? So some different places where people are are offering their timeshares or picking up timeshares is through eBay or Facebook Marketplace. The one thing that you want to absolutely make sure is that the, there is no loan on this timeshare that you're, you're getting title free and clear. And so inside of eBay, Facebook Marketplace, those are great places. There's also a Facebook group called Timeshare Users Group. And I know that the moderator for that group also has a YouTube channel called Timeshare Users Group. And so TUG for short, T-U-G. And so if you are there in Facebook, they have also a kind of a, an offshoot where they have like a, a resale, rent out, buy, sell kind of group that's affiliated with the Timeshare Users Group. And inside of that Facebook group, you can also see what's available or you can put your timeshares available. So that's a great resource and a great group. And if you have any questions about timeshares in general, it's a great group where people will answer any questions for you. Here's how I'm right now with just a point space system able to make it work for me. Inside of the Diamond Hilton back office, there are also last minute deals. And so with my banked points that I have, if I book resorts a month out or two months out, there'll be windows of time and they'll say, this resort is 50% off the points or this resort is 75% off if you book through a certain month. So right now, that is how I'm able to travel for probably a year to a year and a half because I make my points go way farther than they normally would. If you are going to travel with timeshares, take over someone else's off of the third party marketplace. Be careful and buyer beware, but do your research. Make sure you're buying from a reputable person. Take over somebody's timeshare. And when you do that, you're best off to take over a deeded property from somewhere or buy a deeded property for a very, very low cost on the secondary market. And then with that deeded property, you can put your property into the exchange or not. You can either use the, the timeshare as is. You can put it in the exchange and exchange it for weeks wherever you want. Or you can also book these last minute deals. Oh, it's a little breezy out here and I'm, I'm reaching out to hold on to my tripod because I've, I've had it happen where the wind will, will blow it over. So hopefully this has been valuable for you. If you would like more information on timeshares, if you'd like more information about the lifestyle that I live, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you're notified whenever I do post new videos. And if you have any questions or thoughts or comments or anything like that, you can leave them down below in the comments. I do review them and I'm happy to get back to you. And with that, I'll say goodbye and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.